Hey guys, it's Hannah, and I'm here today with my review of The Girl Who Chased the Moon by Sarah Addison Allen. So I don't actually have a hard copy version of this book, which I so want now. Um, I just bought an ebook version that was like $2 because it was super cheap and because it was Sarah, by Sarah Addison Allen. Um, so I will insert a picture here. And can we just stop and take a moment to appreciate how beautiful this cover is? This cover art style is probably one of my favorite styles out there. And it's just like the icing on the cake pairing a beautiful story with a beautiful cover. I love it. So I'm going to go over just the synopsis of the book for the first half of the review, and then I'm gonna go into my spoilery section that I will show you when to exit out of the video so you don't spoil yourselves. So starting off, we have Emily, who is a 16-year-old girl moving to Mulby, North Carolina, and she is moving in with her grandfather, Vance. Vance and her have never met before, and Emily has never knew that she had a grandfather. She just assumed he was dead. Her mother never told her about her, and the only reason why she is now moving in with him is because it, he is the last living relative that she has, and Emily's mother has just died. And then next we have Julia, who lives next door, and she is a baker. She is actually coming back to Mobile, North Carolina, where she grew up, because her father has just passed as well. And she's just planning on coming back and selling his possessions and his business, which is Jay's Barbecue, and getting some profit off of it to open up her own blue-eyed bakery that's been her dream since she was little. Come to find out that she comes back here and she's realized her father has all of this debt. So she now has to stick around for a few months to work up the business and make some money so she can sell the business and then make some profit so she can open up her bakery. So this book is just a magical realism story. It does have some trigger warnings for self-harm. It's not too prominent in the story. It's a part of a character's backstory, but it, there is mentions of it. So if you are sensitive to that, I would be a little iffy about picking it up, but it is such a good book, so if you can handle it, definitely pick it up. So we are now at the spoilery section of the video, so all of you who have not read it, please exit and come back and watch it after you've read it and let me know what you think about it. So go ahead, hit that little X button up there. Don't worry, I'll wait. Are you gone yet? All right. Welcome to the spoilery section of the video here. I hope that you guys all loved the book as much as I did. I love being transported in Sarah Addison Allen books. That Just the way that she describes things. She's so vivid and ugh, love her writing. So I want to start off with talking about the love interest. So we've got Wynn, the 16-year-old counterpart of Emily, and we have Sawyer, the counterpart of Julia. I love Sawyer. He is so spoon worthy and so sweet. Um, not so much about how he w was acting in high school, but definitely how he is now. I wish that he had a little bit of, bigger of a story just because I was interested in him. Definitely does not compare to Wynn's part in this entire story, but that has to do with the Mulby lights, which we'll get into in a little bit. But I loved how Sarah wrote these characters to just like the way that they looked at Julia and um, Emily. They just adored their counterparts and it just was just like, oh, definitely swoon worthy material. But the Moby Lights, now I did not guess that he was going to light up like a little lightning bug. Really didn't guess that. I thought he was ghosts. Um, I thought that they were ghosts chasing Dulcie out of town because she couldn't keep the secret. And it was just like, he looks like a lightning bug. Like, that's not a very cool power for magical realism. Just saying. I would want, like, to walk through walls or something. Also, could you guys imagine him glowing? I just, the closest I can think of is all of those, like, angel movies where it's just like, a slow glowing halo and that's the only thing that I can imagine. Also with the magical realism, the wallpaper. The wallpaper was so cool! 
cool. Oh my gosh. So, do you all remember the movie Smart House and like back in the 2000s where they, she was like dancing around on her bed and she had music videos playing on her walls? That is what I want. That plus the the changing wallpaper on with your mood, so cool. The only thing is if I got scared, I would not want to have like something creepy on my wall. Yeah, no. Another part of the magical realism is Lily. And I, I don't know necessarily if this was supposed to be part of the magical realism, but as soon as the frog appeared in the dryer, I was like, what? Like, is that really supposed to be Lily doing that? I really was expecting Emily to come around the corner and just have, like, a sweet moment with her grandfather. That part kind of threw me off. Like, I loved that it was, like, a sweet moment for him, but I thought that it was, like, skimming the surface a little bit with that. Also with the Mulby lights, when he told her about him and exposed himself and showed her, her his glowing powers, the way that she reacted, oh my god, I was like, what are you doing? Yeah, it's mind-blowing. One, he warned you. No excuses for the way you acted. Two, if you're gonna freak out, freak out in your head and be a little more composed. Like, the poor kid is now, like, heartbroken. You, it, you reacted the same way that he was, like, terrified of you reacting, and you know that. And she recovered too quickly. Okay, like, if you're going to the book, and you're going through it and you're like, okay, my character is going to freak out about the glowingness of it. She like recovered too fast. She was like, oh, my mother didn't raise me like this. Okay, I'm fine with it. No way. I wish that they would have shown like the internal struggle a little bit more. Another part that I thought was like way too easy to get past is Sawyer. When she told him that she finally, or he finally has a kid, one, he's not, he can't reproduce anymore. And two, I was really expecting him to be like, where is she? I want to meet her. I want to go find her type of thing. But he was just like, where is she? It was a close adoption. Okay. No, that is not realistic at all. People would be a lot more freaking out, especially because he can't have kids anymore. With that, Maddie, uh, the epilogue. Oh my God. I was like, Please let there be another book, please. I looked on her website and she was like, well, I'll never say never, but I don't have any future plans. And that was five years ago, so I highly doubt that. But they left it off in such a good place. And I'm like, please finish, please give me another book. I just, I love these characters and I love her writing. And I get so attached so easily to her writing. It's insane. Another one of my favorite parts in the book, which is so cliche, I know, is not where... Sawyer and Julia are sitting in the bleachers where it all started and the whole like, imagery of him starting from when he was in high school and walking up the bleachers to her and he's now where he is now, um, who or who he is now, was so like, just like a sweet, cool way to describe it and then he was, belong to me, I'll be your home, like, so sweet oh my gosh and I know people are gonna be like she shouldn't have to belong to anybody blah 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 take it as it as you will it is just a sweet moment don't ruin it overall I really love this book I rated it five out of five on Goodreads I love magical realism if you guys know any other books that have this type of element with it or the cooking element let me know in the comments below and let me know what you thought of it and good or bad and we can have a good discussion about it Thank you guys for watching. See you next time. Bye.